So to start this off, I kind of wanted to do a quick timeline of Star Trek and where everything fits into the TV shows, okay? Yep. All right. So <clears throat> Enterprise happens in 2151 through 2154, and for our purposes, it happens basically exactly as we see it on screen in both the Prime Timeline and the Kelvin Universe. That's unfortunate. Well, yeah, that's... <laughs> That's the way the cookie. <laughs> that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. <laughs> the episode "The Cage" then happens in twenty two fifty four, so about a hundred years later. The next thing in the timeline, as far as chronologically, would be Discovery seasons one and two, which happen in twenty two fifty six and run up through twenty two fifty eight. So Discovery season season one basically takes place two years after the Cage, according to this timeline that I got from Memory Alpha. Yeah. And for the most part, Memory Alpha is pretty solid with their times and dates, so I, I tend to trust them. Strange New Worlds then start season one in 2259, and from our discussions, we both seem to put this in a second five year mission. Yeah, because if you recall, Discovery seasons one and two, or at least uh, Discovery season one happens during the Klingon War, and then when Pike takes command of Discovery in Season 2, he says, uh, basically, we had to sit out the Klingon War. So, yeah, I would be comfortable saying that Strange New World Season 1 occurs during their second five-year mission. Yeah, yeah, that's the way it kind of feels. So then the original series would then take place from 2265 to 2269. In the episode Menagerie, Spock says that he served with Captain Pike for 11 years, X months and Y number of days. If we go from 2254 to 2265, we have our 11 years. Yeah. And we should be clear here, TOS, the dating system had not been super... No, not accurate uh, at all. Yes. It's, again, yeah. as you pointed out in um, uh, Star Trek Is, it could have been anywhere from 1999 to 2999. And even their dating system star dates were meant to be confusing. Yeah, because if I'm not mistaken, like we really didn't get a solid answer on how the star dates worked until the next generation. Uh, we didn't even get a, a, an explanation. They just actually had a way of putting them together that we didn't have before. Oh, well, that's fair. Yeah, and then the, uh, the Kelvin verse is the first one that actually just took and went like reverse numeral with it, and like your star date twenty you know, twenty two fifty four meant you were in the year twenty two fifty four, and then your point o was your day and time. So they, they were the first ones to do that. Um, now, here, here is the first little bit of controversial stuff we will hit. The animated series, <laughs> if taken as canon, would go from 2269 to 2270, basically rounding out the last two years of the five-year mission. Yeah. I do not take it as canon. I've not seen anybody that actually takes the animated series as canon, so I don't think you would be alone in that. Yeah, there's there's one author in Southern California, and Aaron is his first name. I can't think of his last name. He's a pretty big animated series fan, and he's got a whole book out about how it fits in and the whole history of it. I bet you he takes it as canon. And I saw a bunch of people complaining about Robert April being a black man, so I, I believe they take it as canon, and that Robert April should have shown up as an animated white man, or it does not fit canon. So, that is the animated area, should you want to accept it. I do not. I just want to say force field belts and holodecks. <laughs> the TOS films. Now, this gets a little tricky. These take place somewhere from 2271 to 2293. The problem is, Star Trek The Motion Picture has about a 10-year period where it could have taken place. And they're not real strict on where it fits in there. And there could have been a five-year mission or two before or after it. They leave a lot of wiggle room in that one. Then the next generation starts in 2364 and runs to 2370. During that same time period, Deep Space Nine runs from 2369 to 2375. And also during that period, the Voyager gets lost in the Delta Quadrant, and that show runs in the 2371 to 2378 area. Now, I just want to say this. Yes. Out of all the Star Trek shows I have not watched, so we're talking about Enterprise, we're talking about Deep Space Nine, and we're talking about Voyager. 
Voyager is probably the only one where I'd be really interested in watching it, honestly. Enterprise, the very few things I've seen from the Enterprise, especially the last episode, I talked about the fact that I watched their one mirror episode and it was horrible. Yeah. Um, Deep Space Nine, the only episode I really watched from that was the Trouble with Tribbles uh, crossover episode. That's at least um, a fun episode, yeah. No, it is. It is it's really yeah. great. The problem I have with D D Space Nine, and, and maybe this is just a me thing, is like I did not want to watch a whole Star Trek uh, show based around staying on a space station. Now, it could be that uh, there's some things I'm not I'm, I'm missing about this show, but it just didn't seem interesting to me. But Voyager is one that I probably should get around to seeing. And also Picard, to be fair. Yeah. I think this next uh, season three of Picard, I think, is going to be the one that is the, the must-see out of the bunch because it's supposed to be the goodbye next generation. It's supposed to be the the sign off. So, yeah, I never got into Deep Space Nine or Voyager. I tried to give Enterprise a few chances several times, and I just it was very much of its time. And everything in the early two thousands was completely based around terrorism. And yeah, just, and they didn't even do a good job of it. Yeah, I mean, they tried the, two or three different ways to you know to talk about it, and it just didn't really work. Again, though, like not to go back to Battlestar again, but I think Battlestar handled it correctly. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, one of my problems with Deep Space Nine was I loved um, Babylon 5. <laughs> and so I tried to watch Deep Space Nine after having just watched some Babylon 5, even though Babylon 5 was a much lower budget, you know, much smaller production. But um, uh, the uh, J. Michael Straczynski, his show was so well put together that you put on Deep Space Nine and you're like, well, so it's just kind of Babylon 5 again, <laughs> you know? The little bit that I did see of Deep Space Nine, it seemed like they were always like on the heels of sci-fi and just not quite getting there. Yeah, um, I guess it's, everybody I've talked to, I guess the last four or five seasons, it's a big war story. And it, it gets really good from everybody I've talked to. Some people have even called it the best Star Trek. I just haven't quite gotten to it. Well, maybe, uh, you know, after we finish up Discovery, maybe we should pick one of these other shows and start plowing through them. Well, while maybe. We, uh, yeah. Maybe we could, yeah, instead of because there's so many episodes, maybe what we do is like a seasonal recap. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, that's a, that's an idea. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I could I could do that. Yeah, and then uh, of course we can't leave out the very important and canonically <laughs> <laughs> integrated lower decks takes place Possibly. in twenty three eighty. Now, to be fair, yes. Aside from Strange New Worlds, Lower Decks is probably my favorite Star Trek show to date. I mean, granted, <laughs> I love TOS. I really, especially love TNG because that came out during my lifetime, but. Lower Decks is probably num my number two, but uh, as we said in the, or as I said in the Gorn episode uh, last week, it's real hard to take <laughs> what they say in there as canon. <laughs> and it, 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 that's the thing; it's it's so hard to do. But that show is so Star Trek, like that. Everybody that works on that show loves Star Trek, and it comes through. Well, see, here's the thing, though. Speaking of Lower Decks, here we have given Strange New World so much crap about taking the references to the nth degree. That's not a problem with Lower Decks because it's animated. Like, I expect to get, like, an episode chock full of references to everything else. Uh, so it's not a problem. Right. But in Strange New Worlds, it just feels, it feels like they're, they're just, I don't know, man. It, it, they just, they try too hard to insert those references where maybe they don't need to be for the most part. Uh, but in Lower Decks, like, it's completely welcome. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's, you know, yeah, because, I mean, that's what it's based on. But um, it, it is hard to take the comedy episodes and then, you know, the comedy show and go like, oh, yeah, that totally fits with everything else, you know. I can totally see Rutherford being eaten at a, a Gorn wedding. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> I am really looking forward to um, Boimler and uh, Mariner showing up on Strange New Worlds. However, that's going to work out next season. Yeah, dude. Um, I don't. I don't know, man. I'm so nervous about it that it makes me want to see it more. I hope they do it like you do it, like you said. Um, I don't. I don't remember what episode you said it in, but um, 
basically taking their real world actors and putting them into strange new worlds, I think that would be the greatest thing to do, especially because like you said before, uh, their actors look like their characters. Yeah. And I believe that's what they've said they're going to do. I'm pretty sure it, they've said that's what they're doing. Yeah. Cause it'd be real weird to have them have like an animated version of strange new worlds. I mean, I'm not opposed to it because again, Paramount has steered us right for this long now. Yep. So I, I feel like even if they went that route, they'd do it well. But I'd really rather see them do some live action stuff with those some of those characters. So I'm looking forward to however it happens. Yeah. I just hope they don't do what they did on Enterprise and have this turn out to be them watching it on a holodeck or something. I don't want to see that. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, the the Menagerie did something similar. I mean, you're not watching on a holodeck, but you're watching basically the cage on a view screen. Oh, that's true. But basically the way I took the end of Enterprise was that the entire show was Commander Riker watching historical records on the holodeck. <laughs> and I kind of... That's, like, that's the way it ended? Yes. And I kind of like raspberried uh, at the screen. You remember like Franklin and Texas Chainsaw Massacre and he's mad at everybody for going upstairs and he can't get his wheelchair up there? And he starts yeah. raspberrying at the air. That's what I was doing at the TV screen. 